Well, happy Monday to you, Maverick Traders. It is Market Roundup time. Joe with you here. It's the 3rd of October, the first trading day of October. And it was, well, so far, it's been a very different month than last. It is only one day. I've got my two cents. Go ahead and follow or don't. Take responsibility for it. So let's get into the market analysis because this first day was a very, very strong day to the upside. We've been discussing oversold balances quite a bit. We know we are at levels that we should expect or maybe anticipate a bounce. Very hard to trade these, by the way. You just kind of have to sit and watch them. So definitely pushed below June's lows last week. And today, just straight out of the gate, it's been nothing but straight up. Take a look at the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ. Comfortably over 2%, actually 2.5% for the Dow and the S&P for the day. But uh, the Russell's over 2.25% there. Oil's up almost 5%. Gold also bounced. But folks, what I really noticed is not a lot of my bulls went anywhere. My outperforming stocks, my stronger sectors, they kind of meandered sideways up a little bit, maybe in sympathy of the markets. The biggest move that I noticed, take a look at energy here. I thought this was interesting how this just gapped right up. It was definitely probably one of the bigger winners sectors-wise. I did see a little bit of a gap in real estate, a little bit in materials as well, but nothing like that in energy. So let's just jump straight into the, the charts here. And what I like about oversold bounces is the behaviors of it. This is one of the first things that I'll see. Right there is the volume, and it's a little bit hard to see. I'll do it on the Q's chart, but it's not nearly as different. So Friday's volume... I'll go ahead and just draw. This is the top of Friday's volume here, and this is where we finished today. So about half of the amount of volume that we saw on that big move to the downside with all that bearishness on Friday. Yeah, sure, we can make the argument the volatility uh, popped up as well. So there is a sustainable, or I should say a more powerful push to the bear side. Fear is pretty powerful, but not a lot of people rushing in to buy this. So I don't believe the capitulation's there yet. I just think this is the beginning of what could be a pretty decent bounce over the rest of the week. Doesn't mean it's going to happen, but it, boy, it sure as heck started that way uh, <laughs> uh, for a Monday. Let's move over to the queues. You can see a little bit easier on the volume there. If I zoom in, I'm not going to draw the lines, but you can see that uh, about three quarters of what it did on Friday. But it um, it is definitely bounced. Look, it's that a pretty good move to the upside. So what's another... So the, that's the first part of uh, under, uh, seeing a bounce. First of all, you estimate it because it's at a support level. Second, the volume is probably going to be about half of the, the, the sell before it or as it hits that bottom. And here's the other one. Everything participated. Everything participates. And that, that's another sign of a, uh, an oversold bounce. Now, Tesla, on the other hand, didn't. And I think they were in the news for... Um, problems with deliveries of some of their vehicles, whatever. Individual news is going to do that. But you can see across the board, everything uh, moved a little bit higher. Healthcare, kind of flat. But overall, a general nice, great move to the upside. Now, I can't spin a picture pretty based on just today. In fact, I'm going to spin it about that pretty. Plus one, and the reason being is because we did move high. We did move very good percentage wise. You, you saw the percentage there's two and a half percent or more. I do think that we retrace back up to previous resistance levels. Let me go ahead and zoom back in on this chart and start to draw here. Now what I'm looking for here guys is just a little bit more of a continuation to the upside here. Let me go ahead and just draw my own little green candles. I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe I'll just do two, maybe just a, a little small one right up to this area. That's kind of what I'm looking for. Just a little bit of a retracement back up to resistance, maybe the 380 level, that falling 20-day moving average. It might not even make it that high. Rob and Darren had a great conversation on Sunday about we usually get some pretty good bounces when the volatility spikes. This isn't really bouncing. Now, today it is, so it could continue, but today might be it. Today might be it. It might just kind of meander and stay maybe below that 370 level, right? You can see that 370 level and just kind of struggle there. A nice, healthy bounce would be back up to that 380. Now, this is what makes it so difficult to trade bounces. We don't know if it's gonna if it's done today. That was it. It's just gonna go sideways and roll over, or like those candles I drew a little uh, a little while ago there, that it could actually climb all the way back up to a pretty decent level. Either way, it's pretty obvious to me that uh, I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna stay 
uh, on, on the bear side. So the outlook that I have is going to be on the plus one side for the rest of this week, but I'm negative three overall. And the reason being is because I either I get that three, four days up to the 380 level or I don't. But what comes after it is just going to be more bearishness. There is a couple of things that were pretty interesting. We're already starting to see some companies come out and warn for next quarter. Now, it's just a matter of time before that spills over into having to close down some shops, uh, let, lay people off, maybe retract a little bit, which is that snowball effect that covered, um, pushes us to that scary R word, right? So what do I got for you? Well, I still have some potential trades. It was difficult to find anything to the bull side that continued bullish today. You think that it would be easy with the percentages that we saw today, but uh, a lot of my bulls just didn't hang out. Now, a couple that did, obviously, was BTU. This is Peabody Energy Company, and you guys already saw that uh, energy chart. <laughs> Seems to be the going trend, but it is definitely gapped up. Now, this could be kind of a sideways trade. In fact, I think we had it on the list as a sideways trade uh, once or twice, but it is showing a little bit more outperformance. You can see kind of what it did back in June, uh, kind of maybe that same uh, that, that same pattern. So sideways to up, I'm okay with uh, in this situation. Let's move on to PDD. PDD is Chinese, right? Chinese internet retail. We've seen the Audi manufacturer in China do pretty well. They retraced a little bit, but once again, this is hanging in there. More of a sideways trade, but I kind of like the overall stability here at 60. And if it can kind of kind of leak leak higher and get above that 65 resistance that it's set the end of June there, uh, might be a pretty decent trade. A little bit more to the bull side. Now, sideways, we've got a couple. This is Etsy. Etsy is kind of in almost a bear rally. So I was reluctant to show this, but then I wanted to say, hey, it's it's actually in a pretty decent area here. It looks to me like it's in a bear rally, but if it can get above its moving averages and revisit the 110 area, then this might be a little bit more muddy for the bear side. Right now, it's, it's almost a beautiful kiss to a bear rally. If we get a doji tomorrow, I might just flip this over to my bear watch and uh, get into it the bear side if it rolls down uh, works its way back down to that 95 target. So it's on the sideways list for now because of just the move that it's had over the last few days. Understand that uh, Friday was a horrible day in the markets and this thing, it struggled, but it stayed there and gave it a doji at 100 bucks. So it's hanging in there. It's just a little bit more of an outperformer than I'd expect uh, of the with the, rest, with the rest of markets. So Coinbase, it's not going anywhere. Uh, I took a deep look at this. You could see in May... It consolidated as well right around the $60 level, and it uh, did it again the end of August, and so it's got this sideways feel to it right now. So I'd like it uh, between $60 and $70, just, uh, just a nice solid sideways trade. I would maybe abandon this thing if it broke below that $60 level, but other than that, I'm, I'd be pretty confident in it, uh, knowing that it's probably just going to meander along. Let's move over to the bears. I had a little bit more to look at bear-wise. This is Zoom. A couple of these are slow bleeders. Uh, I've got Zoom, and I've also got NVIDIA coming up here next, but it's got this little slow bleed to it, kind of a 45-degree angle. It's been working way its way down there since it gapped down to 85 uh, end of August. So it's diagonal spread, credit spread, stuff like that. Here's NVIDIA. Same idea with this. Had that same kind of gap down around the $140 level uh, end of August, September early September, and it's got that 45-degree slant. Play it diagonal, 125, 120, 120, 115, stuff like that. And then the last one is going to be Simon Property Group. I think it's in the midst of a pretty cool little bear rally here. It could move up to the 95 level. You can see where it consolidated here in June and July um, if the markets decide to bounce as well. So just be patient with it. But if it doesn't, letting it say at 90, maybe a targeted butterfly, 90, 85, 87 and a half, or if you want to keep it where it's at, 85, 90, 95 would be pretty cool. So I, I like those. Not much to go on on a Monday, but that's okay, especially with a strong move to the upside. A bounce was expected, and this is absolutely classic. That's um, This isn't the bottom, but it's a, it's a start, or could be the start, of a decent little bounce. Sentiment is definitely bearish. Inflation is still a massive factor. The Fed's going to keep the hammer down. Not apologetic for it at all. 
just saying, look, we we have to be raising interest rates well into seeing signs of a recession, which is just whoa, okay, that's just painting a ugly picture, but well, they're they're set in their ways so far. Uh, we're starting to see the impact in earnings and outlooks. Uh, we don't really have anything this week. I checked some of the earnings. I got a couple of calendars. I look at it and see anything that jumped out at me, but already a couple uh, companies coming out warning and, and missing and projecting a little bit lower. So we'll see if that trend continues because that will create and continue weakness in these markets. So we got the beginnings of what could be a bounce. Let's see if the market momentum can continue into tomorrow and even the next day, or if this bounce was just one and done. And if it's one and done, then we're probably in for some serious bearish moves uh, for the rest of the week. So we'll keep an eye out. Thanks for joining me, folks. And uh, we'll chat next time. Bye, everyone. <music>